Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caravalla from ZK Research, and uh, I'm excited to be at Splunk's Conf 24 event in Las Vegas. Uh, this is actually my first time at a Splunk event, so really, yeah, I'm pretty thrilled about that. And so, That's great, we're glad um, to have you. Yeah, so I'm uh, joined by Tom Casey, your uh, GM of all products and technology at Splunk. That's right. Uh, that's a big role, huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a role I've had for about uh, 18 months or so now. Uh, this is my second conf, and I got to tell you, it's so fantastic to be here. It's like coming home. I hope hope that even as a first timer, you felt it. We have such a strong, enthusiastic community around Splunk. Um, they're practitioners and doers, and it's just so great to spend time with them. Yeah, I, obviously I go to a lot of events. I was at Cisco Live last week, mm -hmm. and I'm here for some other events this week. And um, what was amazing about the audience there was the, the cheers from the audience every time they announced a product or somebody came on stage. And it just shows that the audience is, uh, um, I haven't seen an audience this enthusiastic for a product uh, you know, a long time. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, fans of the product, obviously. Yeah, that's great. And I think part of the reason folks are so enthusiastic is we really involve the community in setting the roadmap and what we choose to build. Uh, you know, our partners voted on, upvoted 52% of the items that we shipped in our roadmap over the course of the last year. And I don't even know the percentage, honestly, honestly, see us of, of ideas that were generated from customers, but it's a significant amount. Hmm. And so for those not familiar with, with uh, a conf event, wh wh what do you hope the audience gets out of this event? What's the, the main purpose of this one? Yeah, I think generally with conf, we're looking for a few different things. I mean, we're seeking to create that connection. We're seeking to drive education. So there was a two-day pre-event uh, mm -hmm. that was just focused on kind of education on Splunk, certifications, people achieving those. And then um, obviously we're trying to get people excited about what's happening in the roadmap and uh, create new opportunities for them to leverage their existing skills to do more. And you know, you mentioned Cisco. We're also now speaking to the Cisco audience as well and trying to help connect the dots in both directions for both audiences. So this audience though would be Primarily Splunkers, right? Versus oh, yeah. Cisco's, yeah. Yeah, mostly practitioners of Splunk here, managers, CIOs, CTOs, engineering leaders, people like that show up here. Yeah, so obviously since March, or actually since even before that, since the deal was announced, a lot of the media focus has just been on Cisco plus Splunk, Cisco plus Splunk, right? And uh, I think, um, in fact, a lot of even what I've written has talked a lot about the value Splunk brings to Cisco. Um, for this audience that, you know, is a little more less you know, hard, uh, less uh, traditional IT, right? There's a lot of developers here, things uh -huh. like that. What are you hoping they changes for them with the Cisco acquisition and then what doesn't change? Well, I think, you know, the first thing is maybe what doesn't change. And you heard Chuck Robbins, CEO uh, from Cisco on stage today talking about, you know, one of the key things that this audience wants to know is that with Splunk joining Cisco, we're still going to be Splunk. Yeah. We're, you know, we're still going to wear our t-shirts, we're still going to, you know, we paraded Pony around on stage, Buttercup, our mascot, and um, we're still going to innovate. We're still going to listen to customers and innovate and deliver. And so we're showcasing that through the days here as well. But I also want people to understand, this audience in particular, that Cisco increases our ability to execute and extends our reach, and by virtue of that, their reach, deeper into the network assets. You get greater signal from the network, from things like Thousand Eyes and Exceedian integration, greater um, security from user breach and cloud protection within Cisco, and the complement as well of App Dynamics now as part of our full stack observability portfolio. And so there's a high degree of complementary product and technology sets here that come together, and I think both companies, as we've, we've covered the last couple of weeks at the Cisco Live conference and yeah. now at .com for Splunk, I think both companies are increasing their pace of innovation and we're meeting each other at the right time um, with a consistent pace. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, you know, I saw the, uh, the video that you did with G, G2 Patel, mm -hmm. uh, EVP of security and collaboration at Cisco. And in it he said, uh, if you're going to be a world-class security company, you're going to be a world-class AI company. If you want to be a world-class AI company, you're going to be a world-class data company. Right. And I was thinking about when you take the combination of Splunk data plus Cisco security telemetry, Thousand Eyes, AppD, network telemetry, Threat uh, intelligence. Threat, yeah, I'm not sure that there's another infrastructure vendor that could actually bring to the AI world as much data as Splunk and Cisco. 
We think you're right. Yeah. Uh, we think the combination of Splunk and Cisco together gives you unparalleled access to data across both the breadth and depth of your environment. So the breadth meaning your, your infrastructure, your applications, uh, the depth, not only your owned networks, but your unowned networks. You know, Thousand Eyes gives you signal on what's happening in the public internet. It helps yeah. you understand what's happening inside the CSPs and their routes as well increasingly. And so that kind of insight, as you said, not only strengthens the visibility in the modern SOC and your ability to deliver better customer experience, but man, it becomes just a gold mine for training and targeting better AI models that ultimately speed up time to value, how quick you can detect new threats and mm. how fast you can respond. So you got it, we're really excited and we do believe that notion that says, you know, security's a data problem, AI has a data problem. Mm. At the end of the day, data's a difference maker. Yeah, and that's, it's interesting because I don't, when people talk about Cisco and Splunk in, in the context of AI, you're not like an open AI, you're not building models or you know, things like that, but you've got, in a way, the data is more important. Models, there's, the models are a diamond, there's models for everything. <laughs> And uh, you know a lot of them have overlaps. Some do things better than others, but it's the data you put in the models that creates the differentiation. Yeah, I mean there there are, there are a couple ways to think about that. It's the data set you choose to train the model with, and like so many things, the quality of the inputs are going to affect the quality of the outputs. And we think we have again one of the largest corpuses of data in the world around kind of what's actually happening on the internet and the applications in the SOC, and so that's valuable. But then it's training. Once you've created those models, how do you actually validate those models further and make Make sure they're fit for purpose. Hmm. And so our ability to use, you know, we started talking about the, the community here, um, to use the expertise in the community and for them to do validation on the models that we'd already previewed um, has been really important, which is why we have so many AI related announcements at the conference uh, yeah. this week as well. Well, let's, let's talk about announcements. Uh, before we get into the product announcement, so you guys did issue uh, your cost of downtime report and I took a quick look through that and uh, that was fascinating data. Um, the, and it seems like every year you can put out a cost of downtime report and the, the cost of downtime is still very high. Yeah. Um, digital resilience is a big topic here and at Cisco Live. And uh, some of the interesting data points you flash up on the screen, any outage at all takes a stock down, a company's stock price down 9%. That's right. Right? That's right. And, and it costs uh, uh, the global 2000, $400 billion in revenue, in profit. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's huge. And then it's worse, once you had a major incident, your recovery to kind of get back up to plan, because now everybody's focused on that incident, right? That can take 75 days for you to get back to the point of doing what you were doing the day before the incident happened. And so um, the impact And that, and that has material. a trailing effect on now you're behind 75 days and you can't catch up. That's right, where's yeah. your competition at versus where you're at? Where's your customer loyalty yeah. and growth and engagement at versus where it could have been at? And then um, further, one of the other statistics that's in there in the report, you may have seen this too, indicates that organizations that have a plan for digital resilience, that have eyes on their services so they can catch issues while they're small and respond quicker, because look, we can't stop systems and and machines from having issues, and we can't stop threat attackers from attacking. What we can do is catch them when they're doing it, and we can keep it incidents small and react quickly. Those who react quickly save on average about $17 million in the response to yeah. an issue. Well, if that's not incentive <laughs> to get your plans in order, I don't know what is. Yeah. And so, uh, at, so now let's pivot to some of these. There was a lot of product announcements here, mm -hmm. uh, some in the area of generative AI, which I thought were pretty compelling, but were there any, um, obviously we, you know, it can take us an hour to go through them all, yeah. like a whole keynote's worth. And so uh, were there any you want to specifically call out? So I think, there are, I think there are sort of three categories of things that really stand out. First is to be really clear, um, you know, we're continuing to make uh, strides in our glo in our innovation agenda independently, even as we're simultaneously doing yeah. integration with with. Uh, in fact, they products. scrolled the list of innovations since the uh, I think since last year. That yeah, incredible. Several pages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, you know, we often say, and I I I, I mean this genuinely. We we picked up our pace of innovation mm -hmm. so our customers can pick up theirs, mm -hmm. um, and it's just how we drive and measure ourselves. The work we do every day is only meaningful when our customers can do something they couldn't do before. So you think about customers that are Cisco and Splunk customers. We've already, in you know, 90 days post deal close, made it so that you can um, 
begin to connect signal from XDR, extended detection and response, into Splunk Enterprise Security. So you can take that real-time signal from lower in the stack, stack and get longitudinal visibility in the SOC. That's incredible. We've connected app dynamics into the core Splunk platform and ITSI so that you can manage your traditional on-premise applications at the same in the same consistent way you're managing your cloud native apps. And then you look beyond integration towards net new innovation, and I think there are a few categories there. There are uh, announcements we've made around AI, of course, everybody's yeah. talking about AI. That's improvements to both Cisco's uh, natural language assistant and Splunk's natural language assistant for authoring SPL, kind of our language, you're doing yep. analytics without having to learn our language. Um, it's embedding AI and new machine learning capabilities within Observability Cloud and ITSI and our enterprise security product oriented towards denoising the environment so you can focus, mm. helping you once you have an incident guide that investigation and then ultimately automatically summarizing that incident and information about it. And all those things are about, you know, faster analytics, faster response, faster time to take your actions and really increase productivity. And I think the finally thing Zia said I'm really excited about is the, the progress we've really made on data. Because as we've already talked about, data is a differentiator, all of these things are data problems. Um, the announcements around federated data management and what we're doing there and federated analytics now extending to the Amazon security lake and the roadmap we have for extending that to other lakes as well, that's pretty impactful for building not only the SOC of the future, but the observability practice of the future. Yeah, you know, when I ask uh, CIOs and CISOs what's holding them back from their AI initiatives, the one thing they always say is data. Yeah. You can't not move forward with AI unless you get a good handle on your data. And it's really surprised me how few companies, well it's not really, I guess, when you look at the complexities of managing data, but uh, if you, uh, I think in some ways, it's hard. yeah, AI was the wake-up call people needed to, to to get their AI house in order. Yeah, probably for two reasons. One, because you know you need great data yeah. in order to have great AI. But the AI, but the other thing is, everybody's trying to do AI and manage AI in the environment, and that requires upgrades in your infrastructure, changes within your environment, new activities you have to monitor for your users. Every single one yeah. of those things generates more data, and so you kind of end up with this. This, uh, you know, we'd have to measure it, but this sort of not quite exponential, but certainly factor of yeah. explosion and data volumes that are coming in in the environment. And so, what we're really focused on is helping to make it easier for customers to identify which data belongs in their kind of operational day to day and analytics views and what data can be kept for retention purposes in a data lake, and maybe you need it for compliance, maybe you need it mm -hmm. for forensics, or maybe you just think you might need it for a project later. And now with Federated Analytics, we're making it so you can still get to that data from Splunk using the skills that you already have, um, and, and combine that with the higher signal, higher value data that's in Splunk. So to me, that, that adds immediate value around how you get a handle on and manage your data. Um, but it also bodes well for the future because I don't think either of us would suggest that data volume growth is something that's going to go away. No, it's not, just not at all. Yeah. And the exciting thing with the Gen AI too, when they were even talking about it on stage, it's just the addressable market of people that can work with the data goes way yeah. up, right? You don't have to be a top tier engineer. Uh, someone once said to me that Gen AI lets the untrained eye see what the trained eye does. And when you think in security, you've always had those really highly you know, paid engineers that can look through log files and pick things out just because they've been doing it a long time. But that's an awfully hard person to find and that does not scale. No, and, and it's one of yeah. the biggest gaps in the yeah. SOC today and security operations today is finding enough trained personnel. Yeah. If you ask CISOs, that's a big deal for them. And so... I think you made the comment though, it's like finding a haystack. Uh, it's the needle in the haystack. But, but you don't even know where the haystacks are, I that's think is right. the comment you made once. That's, yeah. that's, 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 <laughs> yeah. that's part of the problem. Yeah. If, you, if you don't even know where that data is littered at yeah. or how to find it or where signal is. I think what's interesting is you and I were sitting in with a panel with some um, customers uh, earlier. Um, and uh, there was a conversation around, um, you know, the value of AI. And uh, one of the pieces of signal I heard, it may have been when we were in the room together, it may not have been, but um, somebody had said that for people early in career, in their environment applying AI, they're getting about a 30% uptick in productivity. Uh, it really accelerates particularly those early in yeah. career individuals with their training. And I think that translates 
not just in the SOC, but also to the developer community and your IT operations professionals as well. But you've got to make sure it's not just random work that's getting done, where you're more productive, but it's focused. And that's why we take this approach to saying, we'll help you with chat-based assistance, but we're also going to bake AI and machine learning into the everyday workflows in our applications too. All right, Tom, just last question here. Yeah. For people trying to figure out how to bring AI into their environments, just a couple of pieces of advice you can give them, because this is something everyone seems to be struggling with right now. Yeah, so I, you know, it's always great to have be captive with your customers and get yeah. a chance to talk to a lot of them. I'll tell you the major trends that I hear right now for the people that feel like they're doing it a little better than some others in this journey. Um, one, you got to you got to get your principles right across the company. So make sure you have a clear documented set of fair use AI principles in a way you're going to approach that. Um, get a list of. Don't wait. I mean, don't wait. Yeah. Get a list of projects that are important, figure out how you're going to measure those, and then start getting after those things and measure those results in your application of AI. Um, evaluate your vendors, in part, and your partners for whether they're doing the same and how those things comply with what you're, what you're doing as a whole. And then, um, really interesting element of this, and you'll notice none of this is really about the tech. The other one's about training. It's about mm. recognizing that we are collectively at that pivot point in a major technology transformation. And it means the broader workforce that needs to be able to um, take advantage of the technology, they need a new language. They need to understand and learn the language of AI. They need to know how to talk about drift or bias and some of these other things for you to be effective as an organization in applying the tech. And so that's part of why we invested so much in pre-training as part of our invent. It's part of why we bake it into the context of the apps people already know. I think the adoption of AI and the effectiveness over time is going to be guided uh, in large part by how well the applications and services you use can guide and conform to your policies in that framework. All right, well thanks, uh, that, was, that was tremendous. And uh, anything else you want to add? You know, I would just come back around to noting that uh, it's an exciting period of time for change. Yeah. There's a tremendous... Change is scary, but it certainly is needed. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. I, I love change. Yeah. <laughs> I actually love change because um, it gets you moving. And I think any object in motion you can kind of shape a little yeah. bit. And in a way, um, change gets us uncomfortable and lets us look at the world with a different perspective. And that's a lot of what Splunk is is about. If you think about our history, our strong history, it's that ability to bring in data without pre-shaping it and ask it almost any question. And I think the world needs that now more than ever as we go forward. Yeah, well, the Splunk audience is any indication these folks are ready for change. They're ready so, to lead the yeah, change. Yeah, so, uh, all right, Tom. So on behalf of Tom Casey uh, from Splunk, I'm C.S. Caravella from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you, Zs. Thanks.